<laughs> Thank you, Graham. Okay, now uh, I'll introduce our speaker today. Uh, um, Mike, uh, I don't know where I came up with your name exactly. I think somebody referred you um, and I started looking into it and I had not heard of your business. And I'm always fascinated by businesses that uh, are running in the area. There's a lot of them actually that I've never heard of. They kind of fly under the radar and yet they're vibrant, uh, successful businesses. So I always enjoy hearing those stories and uh, so I'm going to turn it over to you, Mike Sterling with Q5 Controls out of Beatrice. Good morning, everybody. Um, there's nothing wrong with being English. I'm English by birth. Just haven't been home since 1963. So I've lost, lost my accent. Um, Q5 Controls, well, a little bit about me. I'm ex-military. Uh, I've only held one civilian job longer than a year. Uh, and after 12 years with them, I saw the writing on the wall, quit. And with the help of another member of that company who had retired, started this company, Q5 Controls. Excuse me, Mike. Um, can you adjust your camera a bit you're getting chopped off and i don't want our youtube video to just show your neck so <laughs> that's better if i can get it to stand up that help any that does help well uh, if you lean forward it helps if you lean back then i can just see your nose <laughs> oh okay uh anyway where was i i'm sorry Q5 you were controls we uh we started in uh 2013 i took uh quit the previous job in march of 2012 pulled my 401k lived on it for the eight months or so it took to get this company up and running there was just me at the beginning in 2013, brought my second person on in uh, March of 2013. Already had all my old clients back, basically, uh, that I had at my previous company. Uh, but it was a long journey. Uh, the background to Q5 Controls actually starts back in 2001 with a company down here called Storecraft Manufacturing that sense folded. Uh, they saw a access control program pro product at the National Retail Federation show in Atlanta. Thought it would be a good mix for store crafts since they built store fixtures. Uh, so they looked at it. The first couple of people that looked at it uh, didn't think anything about it. Said it couldn't work, wouldn't work. Don't mess with it. Uh, the company vice president asked me and the salesman if we could do something with this. Uh, so we took it, we ran, we did our first client uh, in Palm Beach, Florida, on Worth Avenue, uh, where all the uh, one percenters go shopping and haven't looked back since. I can't tell you who my clients are. I'm not allowed to publicize them. But where you ladies like to shop or your gentlemen's wives or, or girlfriends would like to shop are probably my clients. Um, we go coast to coast uh, from Florida to Hawaii to my last project last year was in Calgary, Canada. We do access control, which is fancy electronic RFID locking systems for high-end retail jewelry stores. Uh, if any of you know what the little blue box is and the uh, red box, uh, you would know so, a couple of my clients that I deal with. We do installations, we do consulting, we do everything. Um, I work with people in New York, I work with people in Paris, I work with people in Milan, Venice, 
Singapore, Hong Kong, uh, a couple places in China, uh, dealing with the construction, the integration, uh, after the fact maintenance, training. Uh, we deal with the architects, the general contractors, electricians, uh, about anybody you can think of on a project to deliver high-end retail stores. And we do this in a, usually a six month period per project. Uh, I'm now up to three people. We brought another person on board five years ago because of the workload. This year I could probably use three more and that may not be enough because we are now playing catch up from 2019, 2020, and everything they wanted to do in 2021 uh, with projects stretching to 2023. It's been a long road. I I started doing this. I made up a business plan. I worked with the state on a business plan, met with people, got great reviews. Everybody thought it was a fantastic idea and then told me good luck finding money. Uh, uh, so, and they were right. Finding money was the hardest part, but finally uh, the person that hired me in my previous job said, look, I've got a quarter of a million dollars laying around. He has another company that he runs. Uh, I'll fund you on a pay-as-you-go basis, uh, which I'm glad I did with him because I had no clue about all the background stuff that goes with running a business. Taxes, uh, state, local, federal um, laws, getting, you know, I knew nothing about that part. I knew how to give my client a store that he would love. And that's what I did. My business partner handles everything. It's kind of funny with him, when we were at Storecraft together, he was a micromanager. Uh, there wasn't a manager there that could do their job without going through him. It was really funny. Since we started this business, he does not micromanage me. He said, here's the business. Grow. As long as we're making money, I won't bother you. And that's what we've done. Um, and this business, business when I left Storecraft, um, I saw the writing on the wall, Storecraft was going to kind of quit doing this stuff. And I had promised, this was a promise I made to my first two clients, that there would always be support for this system for them in the United States and wherever they needed us. And that was going away with my old company. So I quit. They said I retired. I told them, no, I quit. And in 2013, we stood this up so that I could honor my promise to the clients that I sold this product to. And that's been the whole basis of this. And they respected that. I said within a month or so, every client that I had when I was with the old company had dropped them and signed up with me. And I did nothing, nothing different. I maintained old price structures. I did nothing that my old company could accuse me of undercutting them or any of that stuff. I kept everything the same. They dumped my old company because they started lying to them. So that company has since folded. But this has been growing. I would have never thought 20 years ago that I would have my own company. That was never a desire of mine. Matter of fact, I drive my business partner crazy because he says there's nothing wrong with making money. And I tell him I have no desire to be a millionaire. I don't need that kind of money. I live a simple life here in Beatrice. I drive a 30 year old car, very simple life. Don't need it. Don't need the headaches. Um, but the learning curve, the people I deal with, um, the responsibilities, I can say we have never, ever delayed a store opening in the 20 years I've been doing this. Uh, other people have delayed, but we have never been responsible for a delay uh, in a store opening. Uh, 
uh, which is quite something to say. And we worked with some of the best. Uh, one of the projects we did was for Steve Wynn in Las Vegas at the Wynn Resort when he opened his first tower. We were one of only three stores that opened uh, on his wife's birthday when he wanted to open those towers, that tower up. Um, you know, and there's been others. Uh, we opened a store in Baltimore for a company. The company had sent out uh, their grand opening announcement six months ahead of time. And we spent over 30 hours at the end of that project delivering a store that they could open on time uh, or somebody's head at that company would have rolled. Uh, but the learning curve, how to deal with people. You know, in the military, the last few years, I dealt with people, but I dealt with computer systems also. Computer systems do what they tell you to do. Uh, people are a whole other thing. So I've had to learn how to deal with people directly working for me. In the military, I had people under me, but you, know, you don't fire people in the military. Um, that's something I had to learn in the civilian world. I never knew what a pink slip was. Uh, my entire life until I got one. But it was the biggest, the best thing that ever happened to me. Um, last thing, the, trying to get the business started, growing it, I can say with great pride that during 2020, we never let anybody off. We kept all our workers on board and active, which I know a lot of companies can't say that, but we did. I had to fight with my business partner a couple of times, but we kept everybody on board and it pays off. Um, we travel a lot. Uh, like I said, we've, I have projects in Montreal, Toronto, Calgary, Vancouver, Honolulu. Uh, we're currently doing projects in, uh, we're doing two flagship stores in New York. Uh, we're doing new stores in Miami Design District, Palm Beach, Beverly Hills, doing a flagship store there. Uh, the most important thing I ever learned in this business, don't lie to your client. Do, don't promise them the world when you know you can't provide the world. And be there when they need you. Be flexible. Um, I got a client, we've got a project going in in um, uh, Plano, Texas. And uh, I got a call, this is Thursday, I got a call Tuesday, can you join a conference call? Join the conference call, our projects with these folks last three days, it's three trips, three days to do a project. Uh, this project's going to take seven days because uh, they've learned that if you bring stuff in from overseas, you put it in a store, those folks that build your stores and go back home overseas, they're not coming back if you've got a problem. We're the solution to that problem. We're there for them no matter what happens uh, or what they need. And it pays off. I'm, my very first client, uh, whose store I did in Palm Beach in 20, uh, 2001, right? Uh, after the towers um, is still my client today. They have never left me. I've done every one of their stores in the past 20 years. Uh, and I can say I've got clients uh, that have been with me for 15, uh, 15 years or more. Uh, same thing. They know we know what we're talking about. We know we deliver what we won't say we deliver. And we'll be there after the fact to make sure it works. Um, you know, we do phone consulting, uh, which I'm going to have to start charging for because I do way too much of it for free. And, uh, you know, our advertising is word of mouth. That's what kept us going all these years. Word of mouth. Somebody that uses our access control system uh, has a problem. They don't know us. They contact somebody else that has it. They say, find Mike. If Mike can't fix it, it's you're not going to fix it. Period. 
I've had competitors of mine call me and ask me, can you go into this store and fix this for us? We can't figure out what's wrong with it. We can. Of course, we have a lot of knowledge. I am the last member of the original team that went to Germany for training on this product in 2001. Um, and people recognize that. Uh, my biggest challenge now is uh, everybody looks for me as an individual. They don't look for my company. Uh, you know, everybody just says, you got a problem, go find Mike. I need him to say, go find Q5. Because uh, someday, like Steve, I plan on retiring. Uh, and they need to know who to call when I'm gone. And uh, so that's what I'm working on. We're trying to grow, Steve. You you got introduced to me because I was working with the college to find somebody to train in to take over for me eventually. I had an incident where I was in the hospital for half a day and they told me it was AFib when I was done. And my partner asked me, well, what's plan B if you end up in the hospital? And I said, there is no plan B. That's where we got introduced. I'm trying to find a plan B. Uh, it turned out I don't have AFib, thank goodness, but still, I'm getting up in age. I need young blood to come in here, learn what I'm doing, keep this company going forward because uh, these systems aren't going to go away. They'll progress and we need to keep going with them. Um, it's been a great journey. I've had my share of headaches, my ups and downs. Uh, where I feel uh, totally, totally buried in work that I'll never get done in time to support my clients, and I somehow manage to do it. Uh, I've got a very supporting wife. We're both ex-military, so she's used to me being gone, um, who supports me. She knows there'll be days she'll wake up and I'll be gone. And she'll know I'm back when I open the back door coming home. That could be two days. That could be a month. Uh, so uh, all I do is make sure that she has frequent flyer miles so she can go visit our 16 grandkids when she wants to. And she's happy. So, uh, but it has been a child. I, I never realized what it took to start a company. And uh, between... Uh, Nebraska small business people, my partner that I've got, uh, they kept me in line. My partner keeps me out of trouble with the state and the feds. And uh, I just keep growing. We get new clients. We usually pick up a new client a year. Uh, and we pick up the pieces from projects. We're not a cheap company. Our first project we did, well, this would be a part of it away. First project we did in Palm Beach was with one of the last remaining owners of the company by the name, and his name was Claude Arpels. He was the last family member uh, owning the company that we were dealing with. First project, we gave him our quote. He came back and said, I wouldn't pay you guys this much money to do this. I could go get AT and ADT to do this. And we talked about it. We said, no, we're still worth this money, even though we hadn't done a project. Two days later, Claude Arpels came back and said, where do I sign? So we did it. We did his store. Uh, one of the scariest moments of the career was I built his entire store on my office desk at Storecraft, built it, had it all working, shipped it to Palm Beach, put it in, and it wouldn't work. And I spent three days on the phone with the manufacturer in Germany that all they could do is tell me, you wired it up wrong, which I knew was not right. And uh, finally, we found out that a little nine uh, volt transformer was putting out enough power to light our lights up, but not enough power for our stuff to work. We replaced this piece of equipment and it worked great. They've been my client ever since, 20 years. Um, and that's the way they all go. 
You make a good partnership with your clients. You don't lie to them. You deliver. If you, if you got a delay, you're up front with them. Don't lie to the clients. Uh, I've seen it. They end up with us. Um, you know, I work with a team of people across the country, third party vendors that help me support my clients. I work with all these people on a handshake. I don't make anybody sign a non-disclosure or a non-compete. It's all a handshake. And in 20 years, I've only had one person break that uh, handshake with me. The rest all honored. If somebody calls them to do work that uh, these people are actually a client of mine, but they know who my vendor is, my vendors tell them you're gonna have to go through my, we work with him, we know you're his client, you have to go through him or we don't do the work. So not only do I have a loyal following of clients, I have a loyal following of vendors that support me. Oh, I mean, I got vendors from Hawaii to Florida, up in Canada, and all the, all the uh, cities I have stores in. Um, and it works out great. Everybody works. And I don't have the business. If there's a client, or a potential client somewhere that's just got maybe one store and it's better for them to have somebody local to do their work and I know somebody local, I will pass that client off to another person. Even if he's a competitor, he can provide them with service a lot easier than I can. It's better for the client, and better for me, and better for the product I sell. Um, and with that, that's what kept me going all these years. Just honesty, honesty, integrity, um, and be there and be yourself. As you see me dressed in jeans and this pullover shirt, this is how I meet my clients in their offices in New York City. Uh, I deal with vice presidents and presidents what they see is what they get. Um, the one time I put, put a suit on when I was trying to get the business back up and running, half my clients didn't even recognize me. Uh, so my $600 suit my partner thought I needed went in the closet and has not seen the light of day since. Um, I'm who I am. Yeah, they can't deal with it. I don't need them as a client. It's that simple. Um, there's a lot more to this. There's no way I could cover it in 30 minutes uh, because all, all this, what I bring to these companies and brought to my company is all based on what I learned in my military days. I had some very good senior people that worked with me to get me to this point. And uh, much, much to their the one, the, what their one failure was, they always told me I should get a degree in something. I've yet to get a degree. I've gone to Lincoln School of Commerce and got my certificates and diplomas, but never a degree. Uh, I've been offered a teaching position at the old Lincoln School of Commerce, but they want me to get a degree in a bunch of Microsoft certificates. And I don't believe in that. Uh, Anybody can get a certificate. Anybody can go to school. That doesn't mean when you get out into the field, you have any clue of what you're dealing with or how to treat people. Um, so that's kind of an abbreviated version of my, uh, my trip to get this up and running and keep it running. Uh, when I left Storecraft, they said, you know, most companies fail within the first year or two. Well, folks, this is year nine, and I'm still going strong. I got work booked out to 2023. So uh, my plan worked. So that's about all I could give you in 30 minutes. Well, Mike, thank you so much. I've got a question for you. Uh, I just want to make sure that I understand exactly what you deliver. It's it's kind of my, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it's kind of my understanding that you will go into a store and, and install all the security 
in like in locked display cabinets and, and that sort of thing. Is that correct or correct me? We, uh, we don't usually install it. We, we push for this stuff to come pre-installed from the millwork manufacturer because a lot of this stuff has got to fit into the cases. We sell, I mean, I, right now I just shipped a great big load of equipment to a company uh, outside of Venice, Italy for a new flagship store we're doing in Miami Beach. Uh, it will come pre-installed, we connect it, we power it up, we program it, we train the staff, uh, we tell the mill worker where he screwed up and wh what needs to be corrected and we support it after the fact. Okay. And other thing I learned <laughs> when I used to go out on installations, I don't do many anymore. If you see an issue, step up, show your client what the problem is and what its potential uh, problems it could bring to the table after the fact. Uh, we just did a store in uh, Orlando. We had to go back to the store. They were having a bunch of problems. The people that installed the lockings, the locks themselves installed the catches incorrectly and destroyed about 10 locks. And locks are about 500 bucks a whack that somebody has to pay me uh, to replace. You see this stuff, you bring it up, up front. You are your client's eyes and ears for delivering a product. If you see a problem, bring it up. They may not like it at the time because they're trying to get a store open, but I guarantee you going down the road, it saves them time, it saves them money, and it saves them headaches. So, um, the general contractors don't like you sometimes. We did a store in Beverly Hills. At one, at one time I owned uh, all four corners of Beverly Hills, uh, Rodeo Dive. Uh, I did the stores on all four corners of it. And one of the things I found during the installation was the installer put, we were installing four big tall fixtures. They put two in correctly and they put, they put two in correctly and the other two they reversed. And I brought that up to the general contractor who was a friend of mine. He was a little upset, but as they were, since they were just doing them, it was very easy for them to change them then instead of after the store opens, we have to come back in and do it for free because they did it wrong to fix this. So in the long run, it saves them time, it saves them money, uh, and they don't have the client yelling at them because you put this in backwards. And anybody can do this stuff wrong. I've even had the installers from Europe come in and install fixtures backwards. Uh, and you have to bring it up to them. You, can't be afraid to speak up in the business I'm in because all it does is lead to problems down the road if it's something that could be fixed uh, right away. So, okay. Micah, the other thing I wanted to bring up, uh, uh, you are correct. That's exactly how uh, we got in touch with each other, your desire to find someone to join your business. Um, the people that attend this coffee are well connected and they know a lot of people in the area. Can you describe briefly what type of person you're looking for? Because this sounds like a great opportunity to me. And uh, why don't you describe the type of person you're looking for? Yeah, I figured you liked it because you you came back and told the young lady at SCC I was dealing with that if you were younger, you'd take it. <laughs> I would. I, it sounds like a terrific opportunity. What I need, I'm six, I'll be 68 this year. Um, my next youngest person is 55, and I got a 26-year-old that works here. My business partner is the same age as I am. I run the company. I do everything. I do estimating, project management, ordering, shipping, scheduling. Uh, I even go do installations and repair work. Um, so my hands are quite full. If I was to have a heart attack today, 
the company, there's a 90% chance this company folds because there's nobody to take my place. It was a problem I saw at my last company, and now I've got the same problem I thought they should have handled. I've got it now. Uh, what I was looking through, and it's posted at SCC, is a younger person to come in and learn what I do. We, we call it executive in training. To come in, work under me, learn what I do, learn this. And it's not a short process. I've been doing it for 20 years. I'm still learning stuff. Uh, that's another thing to learn. You never stop learning. If you think you know it all, you're done. You're not going to go any further. But I've got to have a plan B. If something happens to me, if someday I want to retire, there's got to be somebody that can know what I'm doing, have the relationship with my clients that I have now to keep the company going. And that's what I'm trying to find. And I'm not right, wrong, or indifferent. I'm who I am. I see these young people come out of college and they come into the workforce and they want more money than I pay myself to run the company. And they don't have any training. They don't have any knowledge. All they want is the dollars. I don't want that. I want somebody who's going to come in and work, learn, understand it's going to take a while because I'm not planning on having them here for a year and then kicking the bucket and let them take it. Um, it's a big learning curve. I need somebody that understands that, is willing to bide their time, learn this, put in the time, the aggravation, uh, to learn the job and want to keep it going. And it may sound like age discrimination, but I don't need to hire a 50 year old to come in here and only be here for 10 or 15 years and then have to find another one. I need somebody that can take this company for the next 20, 30 years uh, and grow it, expand it, and whatnot. <coughs> Mike, Excuse what, me. you know, do they need to be? Uh, schooled in electronics? Do they need to have experience with electronics? Uh, or are you looking for a people person well, that you can train? That's the funny thing. Nobody in this company has a degree. My last, my last company, uh, when they wanted to hire somebody for my division, uh, wrote a job description that nobody in my company could even match uh, for electrical engineers. And then they hired somebody with an interior design degree and uh, couldn't understand why I got upset over it. None of my people have any training. My electrical training was my initial tech school in the military uh, when I was working on ground power equipment for the aircraft. My other two gentlemen uh, learned it as they go, just like I did uh, for what we do. This, this has all been on the job. I was a network manager at Storecraft when I was asked to start doing this. A network manager, I dealt with computers because computers don't talk back. They do exactly what you tell them, whether it's right or wrong. Um, so, I mean, this is all self-taught. You know, the a background in, in low voltage is great. You know, background low voltage, accounting, project management, public relations, um, uh, program management. I mean, all that is great. You use it all. Um, but there's no degree out there that gives you all that. A lot of that is what you learn as you do it. And uh, I'd rather, I'd actually rather train somebody on how we do it. And I'm open to suggestions. If they know an easier way of doing something that I do, 
I'm open to it. I did that in the military. I had many inspections in the military where they said, well, you didn't do it the way we said to do it. I said, no, this is a better way. Don't you agree? Well, yeah. Okay. What's the problem? Uh, you know, I'm not stuck in my ways. If there's easier, quicker ways to do stuff, please feel free, tell me uh, anything to make this more streamlined. But, you know, a little bit of background in everything, everyday life in that is great. I don't require any degrees. I don't really believe in them. Uh, I hate to say that to SCC, <laughs> but anybody can, anybody can go to school and come out with a piece of paper that says, I'm a master at this. Or walk around and say, I've got a PhD in this. Okay, have you ever done it? Uh, no. You know the first thing about doing it? No. Then don't come to me wanting $100,000 a year uh, and you can't even do what I do. So uh, all the people I picked up, well, my youngest one here that I've got, he's my partner's nephew, uh, had never been able to hold a job at all. First two years he was with us, my other guy here and my partner, his uncle, told me I could fire and get rid of him anytime I wanted to. He's come a long way. He's great with my people in the field. He knows what he's doing. Uh, my clients love him. So oh, I've taken somebody that couldn't hold a job. He's been with me for five years. I can trust him to go anywhere in the country and do what I need done. It'll be done and the people will be happy with it. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that. that. Is your question or not? Or, but, no, it does. But, and, and I would just ask everybody on the call to uh, keep your eyes and ears open. And if you think uh, you know of somebody that might fit the bill, ship them down and, uh, you know, send them to Mike. Do we have any other questions yeah. from anybody out there? Any questions for Mike? I'd like to share something with Mike. And this is a thought. We are former military as well. Have you worked with uh, guard or the VA here locally for those folks that are coming or exiting military who may have some of these technical skills like you um, received when you were military? Uh -huh. Because many times they'll come back from deployment and they'll, if they're guard or whatever, their job's just not here anymore. Have you, have you reached out to them looking for people? You know, I haven't. I've never had much luck dealing with the VA. Uh, last time I dealt with the VA, I told them I wouldn't go to the, I wouldn't use their medical facilities if my life depended on it. Um, but no, I had not thought about that. I really had not. And I, I understand that because when I retired, I was a net, I was a computer person. And the only job I could, anybody would offer me was an insurance agent. And I was not going to do that. Uh, so, I mean, I worked as a temp at a, at a Pepsi plant where all I had to do was cut the plastic off, off the pallets of empty bottles. And when I tried to help, I got told I was trying to take a union job away. So I said, fine, you won't see me again. Uh, but no, I had not reached out to the VA. I, for whatever reason, Kathy, it had not even clicked. Um, I don't even know who to talk to at the VA about it. Uh, if you if you know who, uh, put me in the right direction, please do. Well, my son's, I know it's my son's you can former, talk to me. <laughs> my, okay, there you go. And my son's former guard locally. Um, so I let me let me ask some people if I come up with anything, I'll shoot it to you. Um, don't wait for me. I don't know that my connections are going to pan out for what you need, but it was just a thought because so many folks come out of the military with technical skills because they're not certified and nobody recognizes them. So there you go. Yeah, and that's that's the way I came out. And uh, that was the same thing. It wasn't, I mean, I, I worked at the Pepsi place that was union. I was taking their job. They wanted me gone. I left. Then I did uh, newspaper inserts for a couple of weeks. Uh, and then I said, well, I give it up on the East Coast. I moved back here where my folks were. Um, worked at Target 
as a temp and was offered a full-time job that wasn't what I wanted to do. Worked at a company downtown in Lincoln for a year. And uh, we parted ways. We didn't see eye to eye on how to handle some stuff. So that was my first uh, inkling of what a pink slip was. Uh, but I can honestly say uh, any job that I've ever applied for, what few there were, I've never, I've always gotten the job. Uh, so, but yeah, no, if you know somebody in the, in the BA or your son, whatever, um, have them get in touch with me. I've got a posting on SCC's website for the job, uh, but I have no problem with that. Uh, no problem. I mean, I'm proud of my, my military heritage. My walls are full of the stuff from my military days. Um, and I can understand a little bit about what they go through. I got out before uh, all the mess that's currently going on in the Middle East. Uh, I left right after uh, Desert Storm, Desert Shield. Uh, I was there for provide comfort. Um, you know, so I seen a little, lived in the tents they live in. Uh, so I understand a little bit about it, but yeah, by all means, uh, send them my way. Be happy to talk to them. Okay, we've got time for one last quick question if, if anybody has one. Oh, I was going to say something. Um, I can relate to you about just being yourself for a long time. I had a handyman business and I was always so worried about people judging me because I have these big earrings and my <laughs> tattoo on my arm. So I would go to appointments. I get judged a, a lot. What? You know, I've got hair partway down my back. It's in a ponytail again. Yeah. Um, I don't care. They need, yeah. they do, appearances for me are nothing. You know, yeah. don't care. Don't, don't care. Don't let them, don't let that worry you. Oh, well, I don't worry about it anymore. I'm just thinking know what kind of a worker you are and what you do. Appearances don't matter a whole lot. Yeah, I was just letting you know I can relate to that. So I resonated yeah. with that part for sure. And then, I mean, is there an option to sell the business? Would you ever entertain that or you don't want to sell the company? You know, we had a company ask us if we were interested a few years ago. We kind of laughed them off. Um, I know Storecraft tried to sell the company uh, and asked way too much money for what it was worth at the time. Um, to be uh, to be honest, I don't know. My to get this company on the road, I had to give my partner sixty percent of the business, so it's all in his hands. Um, would he entertain it? He might. Uh, be one less thing he has to worry about. Because like I said he has another a global co company that he handles. Now, he travels to China and Dubai and other points. Uh, so I don't know he, if he might be interested. The only thing, uh, you know, the only thing I would say if somebody if somebody wanted to buy the business is uh, the people go with it. These people have been with me. They built this. They know you're not going to find anybody else in the United States that can do this as well as we do. Uh, but. Yeah, I mean, if you got somebody that's interested, I'd put you in contact with the right people. Okay, well, Mike, I really, uh, you've got an interesting story and a very interesting company right here in Nebraska that's doing business around the globe. That's fascinating to me. Uh, good luck with your future. I hope you find the right person that you're looking for. Um, and I appreciate your time today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, everybody else that joined the call today, and I hope you'll join us for next week's Perk Up Thursday Coffee, uh, and we'll see you soon. Thank you so much, everybody. One last comment for me. If any of you are ever in Beatrice, feel free to stop in and see the company. We're, we're right on the main drag, um, easy to get to, parking lot and everything, but I tell everybody, feel free you want to see what we do down here or get more information or whatever, feel free to stop in anytime. We're normally here.
thank you for having me. I appreciate it. You bet. Have a good afternoon, everybody. Okay. Thank you. Bye.